guys are doing fabulous. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Michelle and I want to talk to you guys today about the things that I ate when I was trying to lose weight and the things that I currently eat to allow myself to stay healthy. This might be a long video because I really want to get in depth and give you guys like the real raw details. So make sure you take some notes and let's get into the video. So firstly, before we talk about food, I want to talk to you guys about men mentality. This is really what's going to determine whether or not you meet your goals. If you're someone who's starting to get into fitness or starting to take your fitness a lot more seriously, then you're going to have to make changes. And if you're not mentally prepared to do that, then you're not going to see results. Just remember, nothing changes if nothing changes. So with that being said, I want to start by asking you guys, why do you want to start eating healthier? Are you trying to lose weight? Are you trying to gain more muscle? That's going to be important because that's going to determine the things that you should or should not be eating. If you're trying to lose weight, truly the best way to do it is to try and lose all the weight first and then build up all the muscle. However, it's not the only way to do it. I did it simultaneously. Although you may not be able to see a drastic difference, almost all the weight that I lost was in my stomach. So the very first thing I want to talk about about is the thing that I believe was the most beneficial for me throughout my fitness journey and that is apple cider vinegar. This is something that I incorporated into my diet and I drank it every single day while I was trying to lose weight. It was so awesome that I actually have an entire video dedicated to apple cider vinegar. It's on this playlist and I'm gonna link it below so check that video out because I show you how to make it. If you're trying to lose weight or trying to stay healthy then this is something that you should definitely incorporate into your diet. When it when it comes to food, there's so many things that you have to consider. So let's start by talking about condiments. These are the things in your fridge that you don't really think about, that you put on top of all of your food and it just spikes up the calories. I replaced all of the items that I eat the most with healthier options, things that are low fat, lower cholesterol, less sugar. I still want it to taste you know, good because sometimes those things can really taste bad, but there's always a middle ground. So for example, my butter. I have an olive oil butter that I use as a spread and it's a lot healthier. You can also buy substitute butters that you can use. They do taste slightly different, but that's another option. The same thing goes for my oils. When I cook, I only use olive oil. Sometimes I use coconut oil, but mostly olive oil. And olive oil contains healthy fat. I do the same thing with salad dressing. A lot of salad dressing has a ton of sugar in it. And the same same thing goes for ketchup. I try my best to buy all organic if I can. It's extremely expensive, but at least with the condiments, they're things that are gonna last you a pretty long time. So spending a little bit more on that, I feel like it's okay. Water is the number one thing. It is your best friend when you are losing weight. Water is important because your body is made up of water and you need it to flush out your system and just keep you hydrated. That's really important. Now, I struggle with drinking water. Always have. I don't like water because it just, it has no taste, okay? And I'm like a sugar girl. I love things that are sweet. So for me, I had to do other things to spice up my water. Initially, I was buying those little droplets that you add to your water. Didn't like it at all, so I stopped doing that. Then what I started doing was getting a water bottle and adding fruit to it. I would add strawberries and mangoes and things like that, and it would just kind of fall to the bottom of the water bottle, and I would drink that during the day. Because by the time it's settled in there, you find that the water now tastes sweet and it tastes like watermelon or strawberries or mango. What I used to also do, which was actually really, really helpful, was I would get a pitcher and I would fill it up with water and then add all my fruit to it and just let it sit in the fridge. And then that way I could drink water at home that tastes good and then I can just fill up my water bottle every single day with that same water. And of course, since it's been sitting there all week, it tastes super sweet and it's really good. I love drinking soda. The thing is, when it comes to soda, I do like the taste of the soda, but mostly I like the fizz. I like that feeling when it's like burning my throat. I know, it's crazy, but I like it. So what I started doing was drinking sparkling water. My favorite water is Pellegrino. It's so good. I love that one. It's my favorite on the market. And I just pour a little bit, add some ice to it, and I get that same exact feeling that I would get drinking soda. And it honestly tastes fine to me. So that's kind of how I got around drinking soda. I also drink a lot of tea. In the colder months, I would drink hot tea. And tea is great. It has a lot of health benefits. My favorite teas are spearmint tea. I loved yerba mate tea. So amazing. And green tea was, eh, it was okay. 
it was all right when i did drink green tea i drank the matcha green tea which i love matcha green tea is delicious to me but the regular ones in the tea bags i'm not that fond of just make sure that if you're drinking tea if you're gonna start adding things like honey and sweetener and half and half that you're watching your sugar intake and speaking of the yerba mate tea it's so good for weight loss and clarity and focus and energy i love the cold one in the glass bottle this is my best friend this tea you guys i'm low-key like nervous to talk a lot about this tea because it's so hard for me to find it now in the grocery store it's always sold out and i feel like the more people who know about it the harder it's going to be to find but i love you guys so i really want to share this with you this tea is life there's two servings in one bottle i have it in mint passion is my favorite 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 one and it gives you good clean energy for me i love it better than coffee better than any kind of energy drink it's fabulous i also drink smoothies now when it comes to smoothies you guys it's really important that you realize how much sugar is in it make sure that if you're online and you're drinking smoothie recipes that you're not adding too much fruit to it or too much juice to it or like yogurt that's really high in sugar because what you're doing is you're just drinking a whole bunch of sugar honestly and i started doing that initially thinking that the smoothies were going to be my lifesaver and it was actually making me gain more weight than anything else because of the sugar so just watch out for that i got a bullet which is fantastic for making smoothies it is super duper easy for those of you guys who are not good with messing with a whole bunch of mechanical stuff it is like two steps it's so easy and i love 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 the bullet now when it comes to like actual food i'm gonna recommend that you guys download the my fitness pal app and this video is not sponsored by anyone wish it was but it's not i did see a lot of people talking about a lot of fitness apps but whenever people try to like market certain things to me i'm like hmm but I went ahead and downloaded this one. It was free and honestly, I was so grateful for it because I did not understand calories. I honestly didn't even understand reading the nutrition facts on the back of like food boxes. I didn't know what that stuff meant. But the My Fitness Pal app was so good because what it does is you put in how much you weigh, how much you want to lose, and it asks you some other questions about like how much you want to lose per week. And what it does is it gives you a cap for how much of each food item you should be eating like your protein your fats your carbs your sugars and it breaks that down for you and then what you do is you scan in everything you eat which is not as bad as it sounds for someone who's lazy like me at first i was like mm -mm, doing way too much i'm not doing that <laughs> but when i started to do it i was like whoa this is actually pretty cool and when you scan something once it saves in there so you don't have to keep scanning it every day you eat it so that part is awesome what it also does is let's say you had eggs cheese guacamole and sprite for breakfast right and you log all of that stuff in you scan it in if you eat that same exact breakfast the next day you can just move it on over to the next day and everything transfers so it's actually quite easy to use and it allows you to see first of all what you're actually eating because for me you guys i was eating way more stuff than i thought i ate there's so many snacks and little things I eat throughout the day that are actually really high in sugar or really high in carbs that was screwing me up and I didn't realize it until I started logging everything. And it tells you when you've gone over. So it really keeps you in line if you're gonna be able to stick to that. That helped me so much. And then after a while, you start being able to estimate how many calories something is over time. The one thing that I wanna stress about the nutrition facts is remember that when you're reading it, it talks about serving size. This is two servings. If you bought this at the store, you would just assume that you're supposed to drink the entire bottle. So when you look on the back of it, and it says serving size and you look to see, okay, eight ounces is the serving size and there's two eight ounces in here which means that even though it says 50 calories it's 50 calories if you drink half of the bottle but if you drink the two servings the whole bottle it's actually a hundred calories it's so important that you remember that because what happens is you might be in the store and you pick up something and think oh look it only has 15 grams of sugar in it but there's six servings so then if you ate the whole thing then you ate 90 grams of sugar huge huge difference and that is so important now let's talk about meal prep because this is something you're gonna have to do i know everyone despises meal prepping because of how much time it takes and i get that but that is what's gonna mess you up when you're trying to lose weight if you don't meal prep you are gonna be tempted to buy food because when you're hungry you're hungry and i know that when i'm really hungry i am not thinking about cooking i want something that i can eat 
quickly. So what I suggest is at the beginning of the week, for me that Sunday night, I go ahead and I cook all the things that I'm gonna eat for the week. I meal prep all of my lunch dishes and I go ahead and just cook what I'm gonna eat for dinner. Breakfast is the only thing that I kind of grab and go. I bought these really simple black containers from Amazon and it's really inexpensive and helpful. Now the two tips I have when it comes to actually eating your food. Number one, only eat when you're actually hungry. Don't eat just because it's 12 o'clock and you haven't eaten. Eat when your body tells you you're hungry. Now don't wait until you're starving and your stomach is literally growling. But when you start to feel a little hungry, that's when you eat. Now if you want to eat less, there is a trick that you can do by drinking a glass of water first. Allowing your body to feel like it's full and then eating your meal after that. For me, one of the biggest things that I realized is that I was overeating. Now when I eat, I eat until I'm like and I'm like yeah that was good but that's not the way you're really supposed to eat you're supposed to eat until you are like almost full don't stuff yourself you'll realize that your body will start adapting to that and you will naturally start losing more weight because you're not eating as much food now I know some people also do the psychological trick by buying smaller plates if you have a smaller plate you don't have enough room for all that food. And that allows you to feel like you're eating sufficiently and that's really important. So make sure you stop eating when you're almost full. When I started losing a lot of weight, people would ask me if I was on a low carb diet. That is essentially what I was doing, was lessening my carbs and lessening my sugar. Because those were the two categories for me that I was really struggling with when I started looking at the things that I was eating on my fitness pal. But you guys, I'm one of those people that really believes in quality of life. That's so important to me because life is just so short and it should be enjoyed. So I'm not one of those people who believes in restricting myself in every single way. When I make the foods that I eat, I only eat stuff that I actually like. If I don't like it, I'm not eating it. I don't care if it's good for me. I'm not eating it. It has to be good. So when I initially started, what I did was I would eat my favorite foods and I would just take out the carb piece. And I slowly started doing that so where I was enjoying my meals, but I was eating significantly less calories. So for example, if I love tacos, I would have the meat, the onions, the bell peppers, um, whatever. I would throw in corn, whatever I like in my tacos. I would make that, right? And I would eat all of that together without the actual tortilla. And this made my meals a lot more enjoyable. I still felt like I was eating the food that I liked. I just wasn't eating it in the exact fashion that I normally eat it in. As far as dietary restrictions, I did cut out dairy initially. What you're gonna notice is that when you actually start paying attention to the foods that you're eating, you will start realizing what your body is doing. I had no idea that my body really doesn't do well with broccoli. Broccoli is a food that I actually really enjoy eating. It tastes delicious, has a lot of folic acid in it, it's so good for you. But when I eat broccoli, it actually inflates my stomach. Realize that, and I didn't know that. So I had to cut out broccoli. Same thing goes for apples. They're delicious, really healthy, and you can eat it with a lot of different things. But for me, same exact problem with apples. So I stopped eating apples. During that time, I also realized that I was lactose intolerant. Like what? You guys, I love ice cream. I am an ice cream fanatic. Anyone who knows me knows I love ice cream. So when I started not eating ice cream every day because I eat ice cream every day, when I stopped doing that, I realized that the ice cream was actually making me bloated and actually giving me gas because I actually am lactose intolerant now that I've gotten older. It wasn't always that way. So what I did was completely cut out dairy. So that includes milk and cheese and I still had eggs. I still eat eggs. But I replaced them for like almond milk, soy milk, and just a lot of dairy-free things. We are living in a time that makes it so much easier to eat healthy. There are so many people who have advocated for these products to not be in stores and companies that are formulating these products that don't contain some of these things that are harmful to us, you can actually eat the things that you wanna eat and that's something to be very grateful for. So if you can't eat ice cream, you can eat a dairy-free ice cream, you can eat a frozen yogurt, you can have coconut milk ice cream, there's so many options now, you guys. Or you can just eat things in moderation, which is what I did with ice cream, because I'm not gonna stop eating ice cream no matter what. So I just eat it less. I don't eat so much of it. And honestly, when I do it that way, I don't really notice anything happening with my body. Now for my actual meals, like I told you guys before, breakfast is kind of like my grab and go. In the morning, I'll drink my tea or my coffee. I'll grab a banana. 
I eat yogurt. The yogurt that I choose to eat has a lot of protein in it because protein is what's necessary for me to be able to keep my stomach flat and to allow me to still have my muscles and my curves. So I have my protein in the morning, I have a banana, I have my yogurt, I have my tea or my coffee, and on some days I have oatmeal. When I have oatmeal, I eat steel cut oatmeal, and this is the brand that I eat. It's called Better Oat, and they come in packets like this, super easy. All I do is I cut it, I pour it, I fill it up with water, I pour it, I microwave it, and we're good to go. You can also use this and cook with it on the stove. This one has maple and brown sugar in it, so it's a little bit sweet, but honestly, I like the one that has nothing in it because then I don't have to worry about having a lot of sugar because I add my own creamer to it so that also ups the sugar. I also add almonds or I add fruit to my oatmeal and that makes it a lot more tasty and it gives me added nutrients. I also love me some waffles but a lot of those waffles are actually quite unhealthy. So I eat these waffles. They're called power waffles and they're whole grain. The serving size is two waffles and it's 12 grams of protein. So it's a good amount of protein in the morning and they're actually quite thick so they're filling. They don't taste like Eggos or not you know as delicious they're a lot thicker so you're like really chewing them but they're not nasty at all i don't eat anything that i think is nasty like i said it tastes good and it's a really quick healthy option now my lunch and my dinner are pretty much the same kinds of things i eat the same foods over and over i don't mind it but i know some people do so if you're one of those people who cannot eat the same thing for five days straight <laughs> then you have to go ahead and make two different meals when you're meal prepping so you don't get bored and you have to know yourself number one you have to know yourself don't play games if you know that you can't eat the same thing for five days don't even do it just take the time and make two meals because what's going to end up happening is by thursday you're like mm -mm, i'm not eating that again i'm sick of that and you're going to go buy fast food and then you're going to throw yourself all the way off and then you're going to get mad at yourself and now you wasted food you wasted money it's drama it can all be avoided if you just meal prep differently i completely stay away from red meat unless I'm like eating out at dinner or I'm grabbing like a burger from In-N-Out or something. I don't eat red meat, I don't cook it. I only cook things like fish, salmon, and salmon is actually like the best thing that you could probably eat if you're looking to build muscle. It's excellent, excellent, excellent food to eat. I love salmon, I also have um, chicken breast, even though with that it started getting a little on the dry side for me so mm, I like ground turkey and I'll eat things like drumsticks or chicken thighs and that's fine for me and I do little things where I'll just like chop it up and I'll add cilantro or I'll add spinach to it I eat a lot of sweet potatoes love sweet potatoes and it's actually a really good carb to eat I also make sure that I add vegetables to my food which is hard sometimes because sometimes I just do not feel like eating vegetables but that's really 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 important for you to eat if you're trying to lose weight and you're trying to build some muscles you have to eat your greens I only like to eat green beans spinach okra and sometimes I'll eat asparagus but asparagus is kind of like this because it can make your urine smell bad and then I'll have kale only in my smoothies I don't like the way kale tastes when you cook it so those are the greens that I like to eat and that gives me enough variety to kind of switch it out switch it out switch it out so I don't get bored and a lot of times your food is really about the way you cook it and your seasoning options you do have to be careful the same way with seasonings as you do with like condiments make sure that your seasonings don't have a lot of salt in it. I only buy seasoning that's like the one thing in it, the one ingredient. So if it's basil, there's only basil. I don't buy seasoning that has a whole bunch of stuff already mixed in it because the sodium in there is super high. But just be mindful that you can make most of this stuff actually taste very good. I know one of the biggest concepts when it comes to eating is cheat days. Cheat days are days where you get to eat what you want to eat. And I think that it's actually really important to have cheat days. And I don't even like calling them cheat days because when it's a lifestyle for you, like what are you really cheating on? But at the end of the day, I just feel like you shouldn't overdo it and you shouldn't underdo it. When you're overdoing it, it means that you're having like two or three days where you're eating whatever you want to eat. It had nothing to do with what we just talked about. You're eating your fries and your burgers and your pastas and you're doing your thing and that's great. But what's happening is you're offsetting all the calories that you didn't eat. So you're making up for them in your cheat days, which is going to result in you having a really hard time losing weight, especially if you're not doing any exercising. Because truly, you can lose a ton of weight without exercising if you eat properly. But that means you cannot be having a lot of cheat days. What worked out best for me, because I have very little self-control when it comes to food, 
is I had to start doing cheat meals. So that means it's just one meal, it's just dinner. It's not gonna be breakfast, lunch, and dinner that I do whatever I wanna do because you end up racking up too many calories that way. It's also important that you actually have that though. If you're going from eating whatever you wanna eat to having a super strict diet, chances are you're not gonna be able to stick with your diet because it's too strict, it's too harsh, and it's just unreasonable. So it is important to have those days where you can have a meal or two here or there that's just what you want to eat. I would say I did about two to three cheat meals a week when I first started and then later I was actually starting to not even want those kind of foods because they didn't taste as good anymore. When you start eating really healthy and you start eating things that are good for your body, your body's going to be like, what is this? And you're not going to enjoy it. And then you'll start to realize, okay, these are the kind of foods that I can eat and still feel good and these are the kind of foods that I should probably stay away from. I don't fry anything and I would recommend that you guys don't eat fried foods if you don't have to. When I kind of played around with my eating schedules, my eating habits, I found that what worked well for me in the beginning was eating lots of tiny meals throughout the day. One of my good friends who's really physically fit and always has been told me that what he does is that he has his meal for the day, let's say he takes it to work and he'll just eat a little bit of his lunch earlier and a little bit of his lunch at the end of the day. So he's had a small breakfast, a small snack, a small lunch, and then he'll go home and have like a protein shake or something that's small. And then same thing for dinner. And that way he's always eating, but he's not eating a lot at once. I tried that out and it worked fabulous for me. At first it was hard for me to figure out what I was going to eat those like tiny parts of the day where I got a little bit hungry and what I started doing was just eating pistachios. Any kind of nuts are usually really high in fat and protein and they're good for you. I love pistachios. Pistachios are healthy fats. I also eat the shaved almonds because that's what I put in my oatmeal. Just remember, same thing with the almonds, same thing with pistachios or any nuts that you eat. Make sure you're reading the back. Make sure that they're not adding salt to it. So try to get things that are plain, don't have added sugars, don't have added salt. You can also eat yogurt during those times or make a smoothie for yourself. Another thing that I love to eat, especially before the gym because it is literally the best thing I eat before the gym, is I take some bread. The bread that I eat is whole wheat, but it also has nuts inside of it and believe it or not look at how much protein is in one slice of this bread because of how many nuts are in there i take a piece of bread and i put peanut butter on it and then i take a banana i split it in half and i cut it into small little pieces and i put it on top of the peanut butter it's a very filling snack and it's also fantastic for giving you energy right before the gym. Oh my goodness, you guys, this video is getting really long. I'm gonna go ahead and make a separate video where I talk about the protein and how I manage that and protein shakes and all of that. I'll do that separately, but if you guys had any questions about the foods that I eat, please let me know. I hope that this video was helpful to you. If you know someone who you're on a fitness journey with or who's struggling with food or just figuring out where to start, please share this video with them. And if you guys have any questions about anything that I talked about, if there's some foods that you love to eat that you think are really healthy please share them with us I will come back and show you guys some more meals because I'm sure that's one of the things people struggle with the most is just the creativity of finding what to cook I will come back and try to show you guys some recipes I thank you guys so much for watching this video and I appreciate all of you guys who are part of my YouTube family if you're not subscribed then make sure you do so on your way out be sure to check out the apple cider vinegar video and I also have a video that talks about how to get motivated to get to the gym Make sure you watch that video as well. And best of luck on all of your fitness journeys. Remember, nothing changes if nothing changes. I love you guys. Big kisses. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace, love, and light.